Captain Semlin there said, we said, we said this before, and Sana, you best start to fix the country from last, last year. Because, uh, Anka, yeah, yeah, vote of no confidence, Anka, you're between me at two. Whoever is in power. Mm. And see, the call for the resignation of the president, you know, you're decaying over one year. And Sana, you better do this, this point. And see, Saturday, we decided we, we needed to step on the street and demonstrate it, and you know. But, Captain, Saturday, I said, no, it was a launch of a national campaign. At the end of one day event, Africa and I best started. And see, they, they, they should get ready for what is coming. But in night, you know, I've had the conversation that's going around. Captain, we should go into it and I said, we should go around and come back. And I, we should jump right. into it. All right. And see, I must say, the message is simple, Nana must go. But people have to understand, say, and yet, that simple. It's, it's a whole lot involved in Nana must go. And he's saying, if we are calling, say, the president should step down because he has not been able to deliver on his mandate. The president has not work, he has not worked alone. Or on the vice president or on the cabinet of ministers or his ministers that he's working with. And see, if the president has failed his mandate, you no, know, we cannot ask just the president to step down. Another thing I say, you should know, say, we are practicing a democracy where we have three arms of government. And the other arms of government are supposed to act as check and balances. And see, your executive, your legislature, and the judiciary. And see, executive is put in check by the legislature and the judiciary. Same with the legislature, being in check by the executive and the judiciary. And see, all the three arms of government function together as one unit. And see, Sir said, we say the president has failed and he has run the economy aground. No. Then the, the blame cannot fall just on the executive. We have to hold the, the legislature and the judiciary accountable as well. But how does the executive, I mean, how does the legislature come into play here? President and the vice president, you didn't say they failed. That is the first thing. The vice president is the head of the economic management team, and they failed mm. woefully. But let's come to the legislature. How is the legislature part of this problem? Captain, a few weeks ago, we're here when we had uh, a few MPs, I'm, I'm about out, uh, young, young, young fire finance minister. No? The charge they brought was simple. I'm going to say, he has wasted all those money, don't see anything done. He's incompetent, so he should go. Which is not a, it's not a bad call at all. But Captain, Social Article 181 of the Constitution, no, it's very clear in there. So no government in Ghana, I mean, no government in Ghana, yes, of course, can borrow any monies on the international market without prior approval from parliament. Naturally, sir, you have to have at least two thirds of parliament approving the loan you're going for. And see, finance minister did not work by himself. He has no authority by himself to go and borrow any monies outside. Which means, sir, if we have in the first time in the political history of Ghana, a hung parliament, ah, yeah, well, 138 for MPP and 137 for NDC. So when you have two thirds of parliament, it means you have to have not less than 182 MPs. Sir, the administration, the, the current administration, no, more 138 seats in parliament. Mm. That's right, sir. To meet the Requirement the required number of 182. No, I said, 46 extra MPs on the camera. But you're not saying 46 MPs. No, I'm moving here for any of the opposition side. And it means parliament is in cohort with the finance minister. Every single dollar finance minister, I J as busy. I know parliament gave him the approval to go and do that. So if they come and they are calling, say we should fire the finance minister, there's no problem with that. Yes, he's incompetent, he must go. But he didn't act alone. He acted in consult with the entire House of Parliament, which is 257 MP, and 275 MPs, I beg your pardon. And if everyone, if anyone must go, that means the finance minister must step down. But as, as long, I mean, along with all the 275 MPs in Parliament, with the Speaker and his deputies. Why am I calling for the judiciary to win this? Captain, as, as an arm of government that's supposed to whip the two other arms of government into check, what has the judiciary service done in all of these things, Ayakoso? Nothing. Utter silence. And, and silence in this case is complicity. And so you cannot absorb any arm of government from the rot that is happening right now. And Captain, corruption, I call it to say cancer cells. Say, cancer cells were body muna, and you don't remove everything completely. It spreads again, it regenerates, and it spreads into every, every part of the body. And see, we've clearly identified, so the problem is not just the two people at the helms of affairs, but it's actually the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. How do we fix the problem here? How do we ask two people to step aside and leave the rest of the, the rot in there to rot? Mm.
MC Captain, Nana must go. It's a national campaign that has started. In fact, we want to even edit it. Left or us alone, we would have made it. NDC and MPP must go. Because for the past 30 years, Captain, yeah, the, the running of this country has shared two parties in South. Captain, yeah, where if NDC, if MPP completes their term in 2024, it means we would have had 32 years under both MPP and NDC, 16 years exactly. apiece. Mm -hmm. And see, on my way, so MB, MPP, I did on my way, so 16 years. NDC has gotten the opportunity to rule this country for 16 years. Putting all together would be 32 years. Captain, what, what is there to show for it? A country that has abundant land, abundant water, abundant rain for all year round, we still import tomatoes and onions. I mean, if there's not madness in the highest order, what then is? Obviously, a team of government appointees to go and look for cheaper sources of oil or petrol. Captain, this is, this is a travesty. <laughs> Time again, you need oil on Impono. A visionary leader put up the term oil refinery. It is now you crack raw crude oil and we process it to get our petrol or diesel in San Yamano. Today, Ghana is producing oil, crude oil in commercial quantities. Ah, and year one, and year two. We have three oil wells. Government assume appointee, sir. Omunko, my goodness. Omunko, she said. Now you crack our oil near the bar. So, what is the function of some oil refinery? I was hoping, sir, the government would have given a directive, sir, that my oil refining should become operational as soon as possible. And that in the next six months, we are going to expand the capacity of the oil refinery. So uh, if not even to meet our local demands, we're able to export the oil to neighboring countries. But no, this is the, this is the height of cluelessness. Sir, you sent a team, Captain, you're able to have per DM. You're able to have travel expenses, on more accommodation, feeding and all of those things. I wish they would give us a budget of how much was spent to send that so-called team out to go and look for cheaper sources of oil. But Yasuma, Yasuma appointees to go and look for cheaper sources of oil when, <laughs> from an oil producing country, which has a functional oil refinery. Captain, this is the height of cluelessness. The height of cluelessness. And see, the demonstrations, no. Captain, left to me alone, it won't be the normal traditional demonstration style. No, 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 no. Mm. We'd, we'd switch it up and turn it up a notch. And they're saying, they've gotten too used to the normal demonstrations that people come on the streets, we march, and then that's the end of the story. That's what they think. But Captain, this time, what we did on Saturday was appealing to the conscience of the so-called leaders that we have. So if in all honesty, you came to us and begged us to vote for you because you can deliver on the mandate and we gave you the mandate. So see, I know you've become so arrogant. You don't even want to listen to anything again. We are calling on their conscience, sir, in all honesty and humility. Mm -hmm. If you know you failed and you know you failed your mandate, just step down honorably. Because I share UK, in the last six months, We've had two um, prime ministers resign from their post <laughs> only because they could not deliver. Yo. And there was no shame in that. If you know that, to me, you step down and let more competent hands take the affairs. And see, what we did on Saturday was first to appeal to the conscience of those who are leading, say, you have failed the country and you must step down honorably. But Captain, people are asking what's our, line, our next line of action. Huh. We wanted to leave that as a surprise because the element of surprise is very key. But Captain, we will take this all the way to the international community. If they don't want to do what is right, we will petition every single international um, organization in, in the world. From the UN General Assembly, we will petition the AU, we will petition all the embassies and list out all the incompetencies of this government. And Captain, like I said, it is not just the MPP government. It's me who said NDC for no act to Almost just say, yeah, the path will be clear for them to sweep into, into power. They are joking. Like I already said, they have the majority in parliament today. I mean, they have, they have a strategic advantage in, in parliament with a numerical strength. What has the NDC been able to do with their numbers in parliament? Captain, say, in the history of the Fourth Republic, this is the most useless opposition we've ever had. The most useless. And Mr. Mahama is the leader of the NDC um, faction in, in, in parliament. I was hoping, say, as an opposition, they could have put this government on their toes. Let, make sure you fact check them. Let them do what is right. But what do we see in parliament? They are cutting deals with themselves. With the E-Levy, say it's in semi course over parliament. Mm -hmm. They ended up lobbying the opposition side, and then they came out unanimously to, uh, to pass the E-Levy. And see, how is it that we say the government is a problem, and we forget to add the opposition side in parliament? Captain, the time has come. We say MPP and NDC must go. All right. Uh, my name is Mr. Wilson. We are on my back. Kusha. Kusha, I'm going to cut it for us.